On the news, House of Representatives seeks investigation of alleged hate speech. Conference of Speakers holds a reflection session on ongoing reforms and emerging governance issues at states, plus updates from state legislative houses. Good evening and welcome to NT Parliamentary News. I am Amina Saidu. The House of Representatives, Nigeria, Canada, a parliamentary friendship group has requested the Canadian government to publicly condemn and investigate one Amaka patient, Sambaga, a Nigerian citizen residing in Canada, for alleged hate speech and incitement to genocide. In a letter to the Canadian High Commissioner to Nigeria and made available to the media chairman, House of Representatives, Nigeria, Canada, Parliamentary Friendship Group, Biodun Amole, notes that Sambaga's alleged incitement of hatred against some Nigerian ethnic groups trending online amounts to a violation of international laws prohibiting national, racial or religious discrimination, hostility and violence. Representative Omole also called for collaboration between Nigerian and Canadian authorities to investigate and prosecute the said Amaka patient Sambaga for alleged hate speech under the Criminal Code of Canada and international laws to serve as deterrent and prevent escalation of violence. He further notes that Nigeria and Canada shares mutual respect for human rights and the rule of law and all necessary steps should be taken against undermining these values. Granting of financial autonomy to the state legislature through the fourth and fifth alteration of Nigeria's constitution is no doubt paving way for critical reforms in the country's legislative process. To further consolidate on this, a day reflection session for speakers and clerks of state houses of assembly on ongoing reforms and emerging governance issues at states held in Abuja. National Assembly correspondent Joshua Gunjidi reports. This technical session is apt, and no doubt it will attain its objective of charting a new way forward a new way for future plans. The Conference of Speakers of State Legislature of Nigeria has been at the forefront of legislative reforms at the state level in collaboration with other partners. Passage of Funds Management Bill, State Legislative Service Commission, Legislative Finance Guidelines, Legislative Financial and Administrative Autonomy, amongst others, are successful advocacies pushed so far. The biggest achievement that the PEAR program had actually made at the sub-national level is the autonomy for the legislature and constitutionalizing the position of the class of state houses of assembly. It's not just about local government autonomy. We're talking about development. We're talking about the challenges of security. We're talking about hunger, food security. Having presented its scorecard, reforms must be prioritized to promote transparency, accountability, citizen engagement, and security. I propose that we consider the following areas for further reforms. Areas such as strengthening legislative oversight, enhancing citizen engagement, and also we must promote legislative research and analysis. A lot of issues have been raised about the current constitution not being a true reflection of the Nigerian aspiration. How do you explain how you go and vote no to your own financial autonomy? It didn't make sense. It completely messed us up nationally. There's need to support the Forum of Clerks of State Legislatures, to fashion out a uniform legislative scheme of service. That is very key and that is very important. You must share ideas with your colleagues. We must continue to maintain records and data. Development partners added that autonomy of state legislature is non-negotiable in deepening democracy. In Abuja, Joshua Gucci, NT News. No doubt Nigeria is facing serious challenge with an increasing rate of out-of-school children. In this report, correspondent Isa Mohammed takes a look at some of the efforts, interventions and measures put in place to address these issues and mitigate insecurity in Nigeria. According to UNESCO, in 2021, Nigeria is stored with the number of out-of-school children behind India and Pakistan. With this alarming rate, the phenomenon no doubt has contributed to insecurity challenges in the country, 
as uneducated and ideal youths are vulnerable to radicalization and could be easily recruited by extremist groups. Another prime factor is the fallout of the recent protests. Government and other stakeholders are, however, partnering to overcome the challenge as it poses greater danger to the country. Commissions were established, such as the National Commission for Nomadic Education, National Commission for Mass Literacy, Adult and Non-Formal Education, and of recent, the National Commission for Almagiri and Out of School Children, as well as different programs also streamlined to address the challenge. Because the moment you acknowledge your challenge, you can only do better. And that's why, President, that's why you say, let us confront our reality. Let us not blame anybody in the past. It's not, it's not for lack of trying, but we need much, much bigger sums of money to fund our priorities. There is a Safe Schools Initiative. It is funded and it is um, a robust plan that has international um, uh, relevance and backing in order to um, keep our children safe in schools. In an effort to evaluate successes and the way forward to eradicate the challenge, the federal legislature said concerted effort must be put to urgently address the issue of out of school children. To effectively tackle this challenge, there is an urgent need to synergize between all levels of government, the parliament, and the key stakeholders across the divide. Stakeholders believe that increased funding, strengthening of partnership, more awareness, proper evaluation of programs and ensuring a more responsive security apparatus are crucial to reducing, if not eradicating, the number of out-of-school children. This will help to mitigate insecurity, building a more stable and prosperous future for all. In Abuja, Isa Muhammad, NTA News. In the studio with us is the Chairman, House Committee on Alternative Education, Ibrahim Al-Mustafa Aliou. Mr. Chairman, you're welcome to NT Parliamentary News. Thank you very much for having me. We will be discussing Almajri and out of school children. Let me start on this note. What does the National Universal Education Act say about school enrollment for children of school age? Well, the act is very clear. It's very clear in the sense that uh, the enrollment of uh, children of school age to primary school and even junior school is compulsory and that there's responsibility responsibility from government um, as you are aware the uh, national assembly or the federal government role is more or less assistance to the state government and the local government who have the uh, the necessary uh, schedules or the responsibility of uh, you know supervising the implementation of the act um, and the second to the parent the parent the act was so clear about their role that they shall ensure that this, the children under them or the children in their custody or the children or what in their custody of school age are in school and that they should make sure that they attend school to completion now, what is your take on the various commissions put in place to address this issue? Uh, of recent, you know, I just read an act of uh, the Universal Basic Education Act that establishes the Universal Basic Education Commission um, that uh, has the sole responsibility of ensuring that mm -hmm. children in Nigeria are educated um, from primary to junior secondary school of that age and to ensure that they are in school and they finish the school and uh, you know they are ready to be streamlined to the next level of education. Um, but you know after observing uh, the serious menace within the, uh, the, 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 the country particularly the issue of out of school the number of out of school children with the uh, UNESCO report that placed Nigeria mm -hmm. as a third in the um, highest number of out-of-school children in the world after India and Pakistan, there was concern that um, something immediate and holistic needs to be done to address the issue head-on. Um, the Ninth Assembly provided the necessary opportunity 
for um, that to be done uh, through a bill sponsored by uh, a colleague, uh, Dr. Karakali Anahja Ashitiduku. Um, specifically, the idea is to address the menace of out of school children and Almajri. When I mentioned Almajri, most of the out of school children in the north are Almajris. There was a system of education. The system of education that I uh, know was hitherto uh, blossoming because those Almajris were um, in a system that you know equip the, uh, equip them to become uh, responsible citizens by going through the Tsangaya system to learn to recite the Holy Quran and to also understand what ed uh, Islamic education is about the politics administration and everything that uh, a social uh, uh, being requires to, to to know. This line of thoughts leads me to the next question: yeah. What legislative intervention do you think is needed now? by the National Assembly? The National Assembly have done uh, well by, you know, passing the bill establishing the National Commission for Almighty and Adult uh, and Out of School Children Commission. And I think the commission has uh, taken up the challenge because the president, uh, which is a political uh, will and uh, determination to change the status quo, has appointed a very qualified and um, highly determined person in the ES now in place that uh, resumed immediately and took up the responsibility of ensuring that he put the commission on track. Uh, just yesterday, we were in Meduguri. I led the team to visit the Sultan uh, and stakeholders in Sokoto, and then we moved to Bauchi and Meduguri to meet the Shehu on advocacy to, to find means and ways of uh, getting their buy-in uh, for the successful takeover of the commission. So you see, on uh, the legislative uh, side, we were able to pass the bill. It's become now an act. We have a commission, and uh, the National Assembly, particularly held our representative under the able leadership of uh, Speaker Tajidina Abbas, established this committee on alternate education to, you know, supervise to give more uh, attention to the marginal groups. Uh, I said the marginal, marginal groups have not, were not being um, exclusive of other uh, concerned um, groups, like the nomadic education, nomadic, I know there's nomadic education commission, there's also the national commission for mass literacy, adult and non-formal education. There's also even this um, trade men and women, the skills um, um, artisans, that um, you know are part of these groups. They are educated in their own way, but not formal, and they need to be uh, harmonized um, in such a way that you know you can be able to regulate them and give them the sense of belonging or being part of this uh, beloved country. That's the National Assembly is doing very well. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank That's you. all we can take on the discussion uh, segment. Thank you very much uh, for having me, Amina. Sokoto State House of Assembly calls on the state government as a matter of urgency to come to the rescue of the communities ravaged by malaria and typhoid. Details after these messages. Don't go away. Are you looking for a short channel to make your business, goods and services go viral? Look no further as NTA Parliament is your short channel. Take advantage of our wider reach and advertise your products and services on NTA Parliament DSTV channel 370, Go TV channel 126, Star Times channel 306 and Free TV channel 706. For more inquiries, contact the marketing department NTA Parliament NTA Headquarters Area 11 Gerke Abuja or call these numbers 080-383-40464 or 080-770-78055. NTA Parliament, strengthening Nigeria's democracy. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. You are watching NTA Parliamentary News, reaching you from the Federal Capital Territory Abuja. You can follow us on the platforms showing on the screen for more updates. We begin from Jalingu, where the Taraba State House of Assembly passes the 2024 Supplementary Bill, transmitted to it by the State Governor, Abu Kefas. 
A passage of the bill followed the adoption of the report of the House Committee on Finance and Appropriation presented during plenary session at the House. Correspondent Godwin Inalegu has this and other legislative engagements during the plenary. Recall that the House Committee on Finance and Appropriation were on Tuesday, 27th August 2024, saddled with the responsibility to work on proposed supplementary budget to ensure its speedy passage due to its relevance to the development of the state. It is at this backdrop that the committee swiftly swung into action and came up with the following findings that some ministries, departments and agencies have duplicate allocations, that there is remarkable change, environment, figure, and some MDAs do not adhere to strict financial procedures of budgeting. The committee, through its chairman, Abulaziz Suleiman Tintong, recommended that the duplicate sum discovered on the bill be allocated to capital projects and demand attention for the development of the state that the new figure for environment be 7 billion 533 million 691 814.45 naira that the adjustments made did not affect the earlier proposed amount of various sectorial allocations which amounted to a total sum of 241 billion 372 million 414,214.63 Naira. Environment is not an increase in the budget size, but rather is a movement from is a movement of funds within the same MDS. Some members expressed support and satisfaction with the report of the committee and commended them for a job well done. In area of emergencies sometimes something will happen that will go out of the budget so what the committee did is a very good job i want to plead with my committee that i with my colleagues that we shall adopt this report after the report of the committee was unanimously accepted and adopted by the lawmakers the speaker john kizito bonzena perused through the bill page by page to pave way for his third reading and consequently the house passed the bill the speaker then directed the clerk to send a clean copy of the bill to the governor for his assent. The supplementary sum of 241 billion 373 million 424,214 naira 63 only for the services of the state for the year ending. On the 31st day of December 2024, that reading really taken apart. The speaker used the forum to applaud the committee for doing a great job within the limited time given them. In another development, four executive bills forwarded to the House by the Taraba State Governor, Dr. Abu Kefa, sailed through first reading during the plenary, which include. The Taraba State Persons with Disability Commission Establishment Bill 2024, the Taraba State Prohibition Against Human Trafficking Establishment Bill 2024, the Taraba State Waste Management Authority Establishment Bill 2024, and the Taraba State Universal Basic Education Reenactment Bill 2024. The Bill on Prohibition Against Human Trafficking and that on Persons Living with Disabilities Commission seek to provide for the prevention and elimination of trafficking in persons and provide for full integration of persons living with disabilities in the state among others. While the bills on Waste Management Authority and Universal Basic Education Reenactment Bill seeks to enhance the implementation of the law to promote sustainable waste management and improve the health of people in the state by ensuring a clean and healthy environment and repositioning of the Universal Basic Education Board to enhance accessible, equitable, qualitative, free and compulsory basic education, among others. The Taraba State House of Assembly then officially proceeded on a 41-day recess to resume on the 7th of October 2024. From the Assembly, Godwin 
in Alebu, NTN News. Meanwhile, the Borno State House of Assembly has received two executive communications during its sitting, including the Deputy Governor Umar Usman Kadafu seeking for annual leave. Kaigama Mustafa has details. <laughs> Firstly, Deputy Governor Umar Usman Kadafur's executive communication requesting annual leave was read by Speaker Abdul Karim Lawan, which is to commence on the 1st of August 2024. Also, the House Committee on Budget and Appropriation, chaired by member representing Kaga constituency Mustafa Ali Bebenishek, presented its report on the special biomet warrant sent by the state governor, Professor Babagana Umarazulum, for legislative consideration. Following a motion by leader of the House and member representing Kala Bolge constituency, and seconded by member representing Abadam constituency Jamnabong. The House dissolved into Committee of the Hall to consider the report on appropriation and special buyment warrant. After deliberations, Speaker Abdul Karim Lawan announced that the House had considered the report approving the sum of 18 billion six hundred and ninety four million six hundred and thirty thousand four hundred and eighty two naira for appropriation and special buyment warrant. The House subsequently adjourned its sitting in Medugri, Kaigama Mustafa, and News. As cases of malaria, typhoid, and other communicable diseases are rising in many villages of Turita local government area, as a result of flooding, the Kasokoto State House of Assembly has called on the state government to come to the rescue of the communities. Speaker of the Sokoto State House of Assembly, Tukurubalabo Inga, announced the House resolution at plenary. Nuruddin Adili has more. Heavy downpour has devastated more than 20 villages in the Toreta local government area of the state. Though no life was lost, however, properties worth millions of naira, including large hectares of farmland, agricultural products, and market, among other things, were destroyed by flood, forcing the inhabitants of these villages move to makeshift shelters. Some of the affected communities include Toreta Town, Saimia Town, Gidan Yose, Gidan Gulibi, Gidan Suli. Randa and Modawa. It is in line with above that member representing Traitor Constancy Abdullahi Muhammad Randa presented matters of urgent public importance on the floor of the House, calling on federal government, state, and concerned agencies to come to the aid of his constants. <laughs> So members contributed in support of the matter with a call on government to, as a matter of urgency, come to the rescue of the victims. About uh, the Latin and other surrounding villages that are affected in Toreta local government. 
uh, I call on honorable members to consider the motion presented by Honorable Randa. Uh, I call upon the state government and other relevant agencies to come to the aid of the victims by providing necessary relief materials and the necessary measures to be taken by the state government to prevent uh, further occurrence of such a disaster. The speaker to Kurbala Bodinga announced the House unanimous resolve to call on the federal and state government as well as concerned agencies to provide the affected communities with drugs, food, and other relief materials to alleviate their suffering. From the Subcoto State House of Assembly, Nuruddin Abdullah Adili, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Niger State Legislature has urged the executive arm of the state to be more proactive on sensitization of youths on the dangers of drug abuse. This is equal to a motion by the member representing Baku State constituency Yahya Abubakar Ahmadu. Musa Mikail reports. Drug abuse among youth has been on the increase in recent time, leading to rise in crime and other social vice by youths. This is why member representing Baku constituency Yaya Abukar Amadou in his motion said that youths acting under the influence of drugs get involved in various crimes, adding that most of the youths who engage in such acts are underaged. The motion therefore called on government at all levels, parents, traditional and religious leaders to key into the fight against the menace. The motion also called for effective sensitization at all levels. The rampant rate of consumption of drugs and all that it was done by youth in our society is very alarming. And also that the grave of youth, drugs, it does not make you to engage in some discable activity in order to get money. If this youth can be engaged in the skill acquisition farming and other empowerment program, the hours of idle would directly reduce. It was resolved that the Niger State Commander, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, and other agencies under the Ministry for Health to appear before the House at the next legislative sitting. From the State Legislative Complex, Musa Mikail, NT News. In a similar development, the Zamfara State House of Assembly has called on state government to establish College of Health Sciences in Anka local government area of the state. The motion to that effect was presented by a member representing Anka constituency, Lilwanu Marafa. Correspondent Bellosani completes the story. In bid to improve healthcare delivery system in the state, Zamfra State House of Assembly has stressed the need for the establishment of another College of Health Sciences in Anka local government area of the state. Elaborating on the matter, the mover of the motion, a member representing Anka constituency, Lerwano Marafa, lamented the shortage of health personnel in major general hospitals and primary health care in the zone, saying that if established, it will surely assist in bridging the gap in all the six local government areas that constituted Zamfara West Senatorial District and the need for the government to respond appropriately. Some members at the plenary made various contributions on the motion and stressed the need for the establishment of the college, considering the paramount role it will play in enhancing healthcare delivery system in the zone. After due deliberation and unanimous agreement of the members, the Speaker Bilhamin Ismail for the resolution of the House calling on the state government to establish the college for the overall development of healthcare system in the state. And that concludes our news for this evening. For more updates, kindly follow NT Parliament on the platform scrolling on your screen. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Amina Saidu. Bye for now.